Well, where does this come from, this idea we're bringing in a new earth? Well, if you know anything about New Age teaching, uh, back when they had the harmonic convergence, do you all remember that back in the 80s? And the New Age people would go to places like... Um, um, Sedona, Arizona, and Albuquerque, and Santa Fe, and Enchanted Rock out near Fredericksburg, and these places that have these mystical connections. And they would gather there, and if the idea was if enough people thought the right thoughts at the same time, then they could, their, their mental energy would move us into the next stage of the age of Aquarius. And in a lot of New Age teaching, the idea was that, that once we get to this point where there is enough critical mass of people thinking the same thoughts for peace, that's why you see these, I always like the bumper sticker that says, um, you know, imagine world peace, but it's, you know, think world peace. If enough people thought about world peace at the same time, then... There's going to be this, this, the next step would be this, this move, next step of evolution would be this movement into a uh, mental evolution. And then all the people on the planet who haven't been willing to go into this next stage are going to be removed from the planet. You ever heard that? There were several major New Age thinkers who, who taught that back, back in the 80s. So, so it sounds like a good explanation for the rapture. All those people who just didn't want to move forward. So we become the bad guy because we believe there's only one way. And if there's one thing people who want to believe that their way will work, it's to tell them it's wrong and there's only one way. I mean, the anger and the resentment is just immeasurable. ...together to discuss our latest book club selection, Eckhart Tolle's A New We did something last week that was uh, unprecedented. You said it's never been done before on television where you just... Sit there in silence. I, I, and I thought a lot of people responded to the sense of connection from that. So you want to do that again? Yes. Let's do that again. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're going to lead us in silence. And okay. simply become aware that you are breathing. The air flows in and out and you feel yourself breathing. Air flows in and out of the body. In reading books such as Tolly's, I've really op it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christian Christianity. So my question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian belief? Does it ever align? That's the question. It's not that it doesn't always. If it does, it's just by chance because I was able to open my mind about the, um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. Um, I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief sy systems and doctrine. And... Uh, God's in a box. Who made the box? God made the box. He told us who he was and what's right and what's wrong. So it goes to no absolutes. You can make God be whatever you want him to be. Um, I happened to be um, sitting in church in my late 20s, and I was going to this church where you had to get there at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning or you couldn't get a seat, and a very uh, charismatic minister, and everybody was just, you know, into the sermon. And uh, this great uh, minister was preaching about how great God was and how omniscient and omnipresent and God is everything. And then he said, and the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And I was, you know, caught up in the rapture of that moment until he said jealous. And something struck me. Just, and I was like, uh, I think about 27 or 28. I was thinking, God is all, God is omnipresent, God is all. And God's also jealous. Jealous, God is jealous of me. Um. See, it's a, and this happens, you know, when you have pastors who don't know enough to explain figures of speech, things like that in the scripture, then people get a misperception of what the Bible says, and then they react against a misperception. And something about that didn't, didn't feel right in my spirit, because I believe that God is love. And... So what's her ultimate authority? Her feelings. 
let's play feelings. We need to have that, you know, booted up back there in the sound booth. <laughs> so it, it's feelings. It didn't feel right in my spirit. And you see a lot of Christians, see, the, the ultimate problem with that, and we studied this before is in mysticism, is that the problem in many, many evangelical churches and in many, many Baptist churches is this sort of uh, subtle uh, mysticism that's there that ultimately, how do you know it's true? You know, we, we have it in the hymn, He lives, He lives. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. No, you ask me how I know He lives. I know He lives because the Bible tells me so. Um, you know, that little song the kids sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Why? For the Bible tells me so. That's, that's it. It's because God has spoken, not because I have this feeling. That's not what makes it true. This is why the denomination from which the Mormons get their largest number of converts are the Southern Baptists because of this subtle mysticism. And they'll appeal to them and say, if, if, if you want to know that it's true, that is Mormonism, you'll have the burning in your bosom. And all that's saying is you're going to feel it in your heart. It's going to resonate with your spirit, and that becomes the ultimate determiner of truth, not, not does it conform to what the Scripture says. That God is in all things. And so that's when the, the, the search for something... God is in all something. things. What's that? That's pantheism or maybe panentheism. More than doctrine uh, started to stir within me. Okay, now doctrine means teaching. What is she doing? It always amazes me how people who are against teaching are usually teaching against teaching when they're making these anti-doctrine statements. And I love this quote that uh, Eckhart has. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes in uh, chapter 1 where he says, Man made God in his own image, the eternal, the infinite, and unnameable, was reduced to a mental idol that you... Okay, man made God in his image. When did that happen historically? No, no. Those of you who've been here on Monday night for History of Doctrine, when did man make God in his own image? 19th century religious liberalism. This is when uh, your German, European liberals from <clears throat> Schleiermacher, Feuerbach, uh, ritual, all of these liberal theologians basically recast God as just a, a, you know, he's just a bigger human. He's just a bigger, bigger man. Had to believe in and worship as my God or you our are, God. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. That means you are the consciousness. In what did he say? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Did y'all catch that? That's in first hesitations. <laughs> Which the world appears, is seen. So you believe what happens to us at death when the body dies? I you don't, don't have a belief. I don't give it any thought. You don't. God, in the essence of all consciousness, isn't something to believe. God is. Yes. God is. And God is a feeling experience, not a believing experience. Can I make the point that it's irrational any better than that? Belief involves thought, but this just is pure emotion. <clears throat> That's right. And, if, the, and if, you're, if that your religion is a believing experience, if God for you is still about a belief, then it's not truly God. No. That's what you're saying. Yes. But, but that's not all. She's entered the political arena by endorsing a candidate for president. The New Age teacher giving lessons on her website, Marianne Williamson, has... I went to high school with her, just thought y'all would want to know that. ...started an organization called the Peace Alliance to establish a U.S. Department of Peace. What can we do? Spread the word and tell others to open their eyes. Author Carrington Steele uncovers the truth in a new book, Don't Drink the Kool-Aid. Available at C.S. <laughs> Steele online. Okay, that gives us a... Enough of a...